My name is Cody Smith. Today we're going to take through modifying my G-Body Cutlass fuel tank for an EFI application. We're going to be adding a supply line to the stock pickup unit for the tank. We're going to be using an Aeromotive a Stealth 340 pump and the associate hardware that comes with that. I had to get a couple extra hose clamps, tubing bender, and I've got some aluminum tube here that I was able to bend that we're going to be installing into the pickup for our new supply line. Now one of the first things I just lay was lay out where I attach, attach the fuel pump to do the pickup as it is now. now. And up with, lined up with a good spot for me it would be able to match coming out, coming out of the sending unit. I went with location here because here because the pump lines up well really well to be in that location. The rubber make the rubber hose work if we can line through line through and I'll out where marked out where I plan on the wiring the wires through. We'll you'll see that later. Do that later. This piece of this piece of tube and intended intended. Or to solder, able to solder it in around. Always can always bend this around on, on, and it's right size, right size to go into this other fac factory point, point just as the original and vent and supply line are. And that, and that's because also lid was also used in turbo, the turbo 3.8 Buick engines locations where they did have a third line car because those cars were fuel injected. Now, as you can see, I've got my drill hole drilled for my feed line. Uh, I got my piece of the pipe that I'm planning on soldering in yeah. there. Yeah, it's basically just some, doing some fitting, fitting and bending a little in the bit here and there to get it lined up where, to where everything fits up on top. See, as you can see it rather, fits rather well there. And, and then when I'm fuel mount the fuel pump right over here, short, a nice short rubber hose for the tank. One thing I'm doing is on doing is because when I cut the there off there, it crushes in a little bit. Uh, it's taking a chance, open tool, opening that up, especially since the, since the rubber hose are in a use. Plans on plans on being pressed top of the the top of this on the inside. I want I don't want any flat edges being a, res being a restriction. I'm making this chamfer. Is as easy as chance having a chamfering tool, putting in a cordless, a cordless drill or whatever you got, and, and just running it nice, nice and slow till you get to the close to the edge of the. Pull it off. You want to take uh, take whatever you can fit there, in there, because there might be just an ambience on the very inside. You don't want any chaffing going off and getting in your fuel system. And that like that. And. There it comes out both at that both ends. Now we don't as much have nearly as much of a fuel flow as it was as if it was just a flat edge there. Now since this is going to be a high pressure system on the supply now, I got a three eighths line inverted flare that I put on the end so that we can easily adapt up to a six AN or to continue on with whatever type of fuel line, whether you're going to do braided, flexible, just go to a hose, or run hard line like I intend to the entire way. Also, drilled the hole for the wires to pass through so that we can maintain the stock plug-in for the aeromotive system since it comes with a nice plug-in. To pass those through the top, uh, I took another small piece of tube, put a flare on one side, and we'll be able to Insert that in through the bottom, solder it in just as it is. Once it's in tight, I'm going to brace it with a small piece of steel or whatever I need to so that I can then mushroom the top over and blend it down some so that it makes a nice transition for the wires and we got no sharp edges for it to be fraying on for any movement of the car. Alright, so here they are installed. I got solder put around and my wire hole also soldered in there. They're hooked up. 
ain't the prettiest. I don't claim to solder everything every day to know well enough how to do it. But hey, it's in there, it's tight, and hopefully we won't have any leaks. Alright, here we are with the finished product. So, getting the hose on and the pump into position is all about just kind of how you got the bend here and moving it around. I mean, it took quite a bit of wiggling around for me to get it where I wanted it. Um, the hose uh, being a 516 IAD, really has got to stretch to get over the 3 8 OD hard line and it goes on pretty tight. Lubrication, uh, it's still just a bitch to put on, but I ain't worried about going anywhere. Make sure your hose is long enough that it's bottomed out in the pump and it's got a good distance up on top of your hard line. That way, it can't the pressure can't rip it off in any way. I mean, it's in there tight, really took some bending and bowing to get at it. On the wire hole, it's got some of the right stuff. RTV black on there to seal up that hole around the wires so we know we got their good plug in on top. We'll see how that lasts. And I got kind of excessive size so hose clamps down here. They really don't need to be that long, but you can see we ended up right about the same height for the pickup. So we should be able to put this into use and save quite a bit of money doing it.